Um, hey guys, so sorry about like the lack of commentary up until now, but um, we are here in winter semis with Drexel, uh, Drexel Aria versus Beast. Um, I guess both of these like, you know, being Philly players, not being fairly experienced um, in fighting each other. Now I've got to say like Lucas, um, Pokemon training, especially Charizard, definitely a really, really like decent matchup for Lucas. There's a whole lot of stuff that he can do in it already. And he already got the down air loops on deck, trying to finish it off with a down tilt into the grab, but you know, Charizard being so heavy, obviously not gonna be dying to any of Lucas's three kill throws um, that soon at all. Um, Aria going super, super deep, understanding that, you know, Charizard was positioned um, in order to go get the edge guard. Was not able to find it though. Um, but yeah, this is definitely his stock to take right now. But, you know, Beast is super, super prone to any kind of comebacks. Just as I said that from mid stage, from the opposite side of the stage, that used to back it at like 70, 80 something. Ugh. I guess. Sure, he's going to take it with F Smash. That's fine. But. Right now, Aria is looking to fight his way out of the corner, is able to catch that jump from Beast. Um, and honestly, I feel like very few players that can actually hold the stage so, like, aggressively and so strongly as Beast. Like, once you're in the corner against Beast, you're taking a lot of hits, and you really have to, like, fight tooth and nail um, to get out. And directional air dodging like that against Ivy, so it's really, really dangerous. <gasps> I thought, I thought he was going to get anti aid by like an up smash or something. That was, that was super, super risky. Um, really good use of the PK Thunder there to force out the switch. Um, of course, having a transcendent projectile like that that is able to go through opponents um, is extremely helpful in gimping tether recoveries because you just put it in the general line of fire and you keep looping it around. Going to be hit with a flare blitz all the way across the stage and he'll, you know, he'll still live. He has to take those sometimes. But, uh, you know, Beast, when he presses those buttons, he does so with full intentionality. Sometimes he lands it and, you know, you explode. Yeah. No, that, that was a really nice uh, space flare blitz as well. Definitely taking advantage of Lucas's video through ground speed, understanding that he could not get from A to B in time um, and was just able to land back onto stage safely. That was a good little wait. Beast didn't really know which way that he was dying for, be it for up air, uh, excuse me, up throw or the back throw. Um, either way, what a nice get up, uh, uh, get off of ledge option from Aria, going for the double jump cancel. Uh, Zell, really good way of stuffing out that F smash. Yeah, Beast just followed um, his drift so so well. Um, we're just able to wait out that neutral air dodge. That was a really really good wait. He didn't want to commit to the PK Thunder, knowing that Beast still had a jump. Maybe he was going to jump back onto the stage, and thus he got ready for the down smash, but released it just a couple of frames too late. Or if he initiated it sooner, he would have definitely gotten the stock right there. Beast once again really really smart with these Charizard switches, understanding that if he tries to recover with Ivy, so his tether is just going to be gimped over and over again. Shield crush, you're not going to work out. Has the lead on directional air dodge, but you have to keep in mind, like uh, Lucas's air acceleration is just fantastic. You know, still able to maneuver around um, and still cross up Charizard. One more of those back heels, and that's the stock. Aw, oh, Beast, he overcommitted and now he has to fight his way out of the corner and getting off the corner against Lucas is so difficult. His massive disjoints, his quick buttons, his shield pressure, like... Okay, he'll just bunny hop over that and... That's fine. <gasps> oh my god, that almost didn't work out towards Aria's favor at all. And he's gonna clink with the up smash. And that was ridiculous. Everything that happened in the last 20 seconds was ridiculous. The flare blitz actually being stuffed out by the PK fire. The PK fire not even killing when Charizard was at like 155%. Look at this beast wanting to mash out up smash and it actually, and the first hit of it is actually gonna end up clanking and causing both characters to go into rebound. My question is like how long, I don't know if rebound animations in Smash are actually universal. I don't know if some characters have longer ones or not. Um, in fact, I could probably go check that at some point, but that, that'd be that'd be important to know, I think. If your rebound animation is, you know, shorter than an opponent's, you could easily uh, try to, like, throw out your quickest button, and you you will win that interaction. So... I'm curious if that's actually a thing. Ready? Hmm. 
Yep. Yep. Game two. They're gonna be going to Yoshi's story. Um, I agree with this pick from Beast. It's a little bit smaller, just like able to keep the space a little bit more enclosed in. It's gonna be a little bit easier to just sort of click space on Lucas. Um, and also the flat edges make it very convenient for characters like Ivy so to get those edge guards on Lucas, right? Because he doesn't have to worry about them going under the stage. Uh, you know, he just has to kind of follow the slope of the edge down and he will find those downers. A really good extension with that up, he's just catching. Um, you know, Aria not pressing any buttons there. Tries to go for the PK3s, th but you know, Beast, like, you know, very comfortable with the trajectory and arc of the move, just being able to jump over it, getting a couple of down air loops into the F smash. Really good damage coming out from Aria, but Charles is being so heavy. Of course, still gonna be able to lift that forwarder this time, the high recovery. Uh, Yoshi's story actually not working towards his favor. He's gonna be landing on that platform rather than on the stage itself, um, giving, you know, Aria ample time to just hit him with you know, a big strong button. Wow, just caught him mashing. That was a perfect way. Just waited for, you know, the very final hitbox of the move to be active, understanding that, you know, Lucas can't possibly drift that far forward with the move. Good way of getting off the platform as well. Falling up it on shield like that must be incredibly safe. Well, that's what I assume, at least, by the amount of shields that I have. I could also just be completely talking out of my ass. Um, yep, good now out of shield. Um, you know, Arya has to be a little bit more careful about the way that he's pressing buttons on Beast's shield right now. Definitely not the position he wants to be in. Good, quick tether to get back onto the stage, making sure he's not going to be continued edge guarding, edge guarded any longer. Neutral get up and right into the F smash. He has to be careful, like, when... I feel like he's buffering a lot of these ledge options super, super quickly. It's it's as though like he didn't expect to get back onto the stage, and as a result, he's pressing like the first button, or he's like trying to mix it up. And Beast is like, okay, well, I don't have to read for your positioning. I can just read for your timing and just throw out. A, I know when to throw out the button. It doesn't matter which one it is because F Smash covers just about everything else. Ooh, so such a dangerous way of getting back onto the stage. Double jump forward. Had that been stuffed out, being off stage as Lucas without a double jump against Ivy, so just scary stuff. Mm -hmm. Charlie Zoids, massive hurt boxes, massive win. Really, uh, you know, not gonna work towards his favorite there. F still not gonna be able to kill quite yet. Um, wow, good hit out of that PK. Thunder tries to go through the spike and end it all. He's not able to find it though. What happened? What happened? Was that a shield poke? Or did he just drop a shield? I need to see this replay. So he goes for the spike, he tries to go for it all. And then what happens here? I I still don't get it. What happened? So he's holding shield. Okay, I actually do not have an explanation for that. There is no way, no way that Lucas should have been shield I poked. I think it genuinely poked. It hit on like the left side. That's so weird looking. Cause like, you know that Flare Blitz is like two hits, right? So like, he hit on yeah. the opposite side. So maybe it shrunk and then the explosion was just enough to poke. Like he was far enough so that it wouldn't touch the shield and only touch like his, his hair. Like something in ultimate hits both a hurt box and like the shield box what's its priority do you know oh that's a that's a smash mechanic no matter what if you hit uh hurt box and the shield the shield will always take priority that's the point of like that's how shield pokes shield like our priority. thing yeah so how is it possible that that explosion did not hit any other he part hit of the he hit him on the far side so like the explosion was probably in front of charizard so he probably got hit by the far right side since he was on the left side of lucas and that was, and that so it was just, just was enough because he was exposed just enough by the first hit hitting the shield, shrinking it, that the explosion just didn't touch the shield at all. Maybe. I mean, I, I feel like that's the that's only explanation. <laughs> that's so crazy. All right, take it away. Yeah, um, I'm still kind of shook from that, actually. That's not an interaction that I was anticipating. I kind of think Aria didn't deserve it, but you know what? It happens. Sometimes it'd be like that. Um, oh my god. 
Yeah, that PK fight is actually so good at stuffing out the flail blitz. That's already like the second time that he's gotten away with, with that. And um, it's just like a huge call out to Beast. Like, hey, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, you know, you can't really. Wow. Cat catching that aggression just to get back onto the stage. Ali is picking up on his momentum super well. Did it just lag on my end? Or was that. Well, regardless, he's now uh, off stage against Ivy, so... Yeah, no, Beast has, has, has some small drops right now. Small-ish. He's at 17, yikers. Okay, so he's still... Yeah. Up. Trying to set up some down-air loops on the shield, but, you know, down-air being so unsafe like that. I mean, it's like a, it's a high-risk, high-load option. All that Beast really needed to counter play just a sit and shield. Throw out his fastest out of shield button. Wow, I'm so surprised that he was able to get a down tilt out in time. That was the most bizarre tether thing that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it just gives up. It just gives up. Yeah. I just like saw it like connect and it was like, eh, maybe, nah. You know. Yeah, again, not being able to get those out of shield punishes, but. Yeah, if your move is getting called out on shield with a, with like a, with an out of shield down air from Ivy, so that's like a huge call out saying, "Hey, buddy, you don't really want to press this button on my shield." Um, Ali exploded. He's dying now. He is now off stage against Charizard. He goes for the high recovery. Ah, uh, you always need to anticipate them going longer than you'd expect. They always go a little bit longer than you think, especially Lucas's update. That thing goes super super long. Play Blitz right back onto the stage, does not snap, and still was able to avoid the down smash. Doesn't get the Play Blitz, it's gonna be the F tilt to finally take it. I mean, I think this is still doable for Aria right now. You know, Lucas is definitely really, really proficient with his low percent combos. There's a whole lot of extensions possible right now. And he's going through all these out of shield down downers, but finally gets the shield poke. Uh, though it wasn't the spike hitbox, so he just ended up being, you know, sent the other way. Good use of uh, PK Fire just to cover his descent to the ledge a little bit. Ooh, that bullet seat was super, super questionable. Really good weight. Um, putting the down smash to finish before he went to go snap onto the ledge. Ooh, little, little beautiful his PK flash. She has to go for something a little saucy, a little bit schmixy. I like these fake outs coming from Beast, like running off and trying to, you know, jump back onto the stage, but that's just a nasty place to be put in. That's such a nasty predicament. And I forget, is winning semis best of five or uh, three? Uh, usually when Helper does it, it's best of five, but Dill's in control, so it's best of three. Just throwing you under the bus, Dill. <laughs> LOL. LOL. He, he just name dropped him and everything. Yeah. He just exposed him and his way to the rest of the Top world. three would be best of five, though. Okay. So. That sounds. Listen, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Um, that means Alia is going to be taking it over the beast, the one and only, the, the funny button boy. Uh, from Philadelphia, no cream cheese, uh, two to one, and uh, that means winners finals is going to be Aria and who did Mega lose to? Huh? I'm gonna go take a he look. He lost a look up teapot, a Terry, I think. I might be remembering that wrong. No, I don't. Okay, I'm gonna go take a look at bracket. Let's see what's happening. So we have.